His Eminence is travelling to Ghana this week for Thanksgiving Festival. We are prayers and thoughts are with you for that. And also, First Lady, you're welcome. Happy New Year. God bless you. Good to see you. It's always a blessing to have our, our dear brother and co-worker in the house. God bless you. I pray you've had a good week. Have you? Had a blessed week? It gets better. It's going to get better. The year's going to get better. Praise God. The latter will be greater than the former declares the word of God. Praise God. So I want to welcome everyone, our, our brethren from China. You are welcome. Our Baptists were baptized last week. We have their certificates to present to them later on today. So God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So with no further ado, let's just come into some reflection in the word of God. Today, the theme for today's message is to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. To heal the brokenhearted. Uh, the scriptural reading as a foundation, I'm taking Luke chapter 4, verse 17 to 21. So let's stand together. We're going to read this scripture. Praise God. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, verse 20. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And verse 21, and he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Praise God for his word. Please take your seat. And I just want to leave verse 21 on the overhead because this is what I want to focus on today because today, so I want to declare and say that is today this scripture is fulfilled in our hearing. This is the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. It doesn't matter your background where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've experienced in life. I'm sure you can identify with adversity and challenges on different levels, it's all relative. One's burden might be light to someone else, someone's light burden might be heavy to someone else. But we all face challenges and encounters of, of different uh, unforeseen uh, 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 adversities. And we wanna to look to God to help us guide and lead us to move forward. Life is characterized by ups and downs, sadness and joy, sweet and, and, uh, and sour. You know, uh, we have different types of experience. There's a roller coaster in life. And we do have different challenges. And the Lord is, not, is aware of all these things. God knows where you are. God knows what you've been through. And amazingly, ironically, in a sense, God has been there at those times. Sometimes we're so, we cannot see the wood for the trees. We cannot see God's presence because we're so wrapped up and caught up with what we want to focus on and what we want to regurgitate. We miss God's presence and God's directions in our lives. And this is what the Word of God teaches us, to take time to listen to the voice of God. You have a choice. You can either go through your challenges on your own because people cannot help you. They can only go thus far, but they cannot solve the problems. Even death, the finalities of life, death is an end. No one can come into the grave with you. You go alone. You've come alone and you shall go alone. You know, so we all experience different challenges. And we see some references in the scripture that some, some amazing men or some uh, personalities in the word of God experience some of the greatest adversities that human, a human can experience. David himself, who was the second king of Israel, he had so many adversities and challenges in his life that all he could do was trust on God who called him in the first place. In fact, Psalm 40 tells us this. This is David. And sometimes David speaks from a place of challenge, a place where he feels hopeless and helpless, but he cries out. And in those places, those times, he can only put his trust and his hope on God. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. 
It doesn't give you a time scale when he heard his cry, when he responded to him. But he said, I just waited upon the Lord. I waited and I waited. There was no time, particular time, God is going to say, I'm going to answer on this hour, this day, this second. We just got to wait upon the Lord. And that's so important. The word wait here means uh, to look for, to hope, and to expect. So he looked, he hoped, and he was in expectation for God's move. So I don't know where you're coming from today, what experiences you've had with stepping over the eighth day of the new year, but I know we just need to wait upon the Lord. And Isaiah goes on to reinforce this attitude of waiting, this mindset of waiting, because in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, Isaiah himself writes and records, but those who wait on the Lord, he says everyone else will faint and will fail, but he says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. He didn't say those who wait on their government, those who wait on the king of Israel, those who wait on their friends, those who wait on their family, but those who wait upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God keeps us strong. The word of God empowers us. It doesn't matter about age. It doesn't matter about qualification. It doesn't matter about status in life. What we need to do is wait upon the Lord, and that's how we get renewed. We get empowered. Hallelujah. Praise God. And life tends to sideswipe us and present us with challenges, unexpected things, the element of surprise. We are ambushed sometimes with life's challenges. And we're no different to the patriarchs. We are no different to the apostles. They all had similar experiences as you and I. The difference is whether we prevail and move on and rise above adversity is who we put our hope on and our trust upon. Job made this statement in Job chapter 17 verse 1. My spirit is broken. My days are extinguished. The grave is ready for me. Wow. What a depressing statement. So you don't want to be around these type of people. (laughs) Woe is me. The cup is not only half full or half empty, it's empty. There's nothing there for me to draw from. It's hopelessness and helplessness. He felt hopeless and helpless. David himself, he joins this mantra, this kind of woe is me attitude. I am forgotten like a dead man. Out of mind, I am like a broken vessel. Wow. Sometimes we come to that place. Have you been to that place where you didn't know which way to turn, what direction to go? You felt really helpless. You felt really challenged. You really felt oppressed. You know, and, but it's not just anyone making this statement. It's a king making this statement. You can say someone, it could be a pauper, it could be a poor person, it could be a person who seems insignificant, could have made that statement, and we can perhaps understand that and acknowledge that. But this is the king, the second king of Israel made that statement. The, The person whom God said about him, watch this, God said about him in Acts chapter 13, 22, I have found David, this is Acts 13 verse 22, I have found David, uh, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who would do all my will. He was the one that God said that, these made this statement about David, and yet David was, woe is me. Oh, hallelujah. I wish you were receiving today first samuel 13 14 but now your kingdom should not continue this is directed against saul the first king of israel the lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart this is who's saying woe is me i'm like a broken vessel yet god calls him and he feels he feels he has this attitude he has this outlook in life he feels the the adversities and the challenges overwhelm him he's drowned in his own sorrows But yet God says, this is the man after my own heart. Wow. Doesn't mean because God's called you, everything will be rosy. The sun will always be shining. There would be adversity. The important thing is that God is in the midst of your adversity and God is in the midst of your struggle. That's what's important. Oh, hallelujah. Just let's let's work this. You see, David had soul come against him, tried to kill him numerous of times. You can see all the references in 1 Samuel from chapter 18 right through. You see that Saul tried to kill him. And he had an opportunity to kill Saul. But he he held his hand from killing Saul because he said, this is is God's anointed. Come on, I wish let's work this together this morning. 
And learn something to empower us, to live here empowered, sing, rejoicing in the Lord, praise the Lord. Not only did he have, not only did he have Saul try to kill him, he had his son Absalom try to take his kingdom. His son, his third son tried, came against him to destroy, take his power, take his authority. And he had to run and hide from his own son. This is the man who's after God's own heart. But God's called me, why am I going through this? Because God is strengthening you. God is empowering you. God is preparing you for something greater. Hallelujah. Praise. Don't look around who's around you. Don't look at your foes. Don't look at your enemies. But look more inside of you who's in you. Because who's in you is greater than he who is in the world. I wish I'm speaking to someone today. And when he's anointed, when Samuel anoints him, what happens? The Philistines come against him. The anointing brings opposition. The anointing brings hatred. The anointing brings jealousy. Oh, I'm saying, when you're anointed, the enemy, everything will come out the woodwork to come against you. But God will allow it to show them that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That you are more powerful than that than what the, what the adversity is. And he will use the adversity as the stepping stone to promote you, to elevate you. Because your end will be greater than your former. When Job, God said, Job, he said to the devil, look at this man. He serves me with all he has. And Job says, take his wealth away from him. Take his family away from him. Take his health away from him. And he will curse you. And God took everything away. He was another after man's God's own heart. So maybe you might desire not to be after God's own heart. <laughs> if that's what the outcome is, then I don't want to be God's favorite. <laughs> But in that God will empower you because at the end of Job's life, he, re, he restored him double than what he had in the first place. How does it work? Well, God knows. God has a mechanism. It's beyond our understanding. That's why we're called to trust him, not always understand him. Sometimes I'm going through something. I cannot understand why am I going through this? But God says, just trust me. Just follow me and I'll lead you and I'll lead the way. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So the anointing brings a lot of opposition. See, the Lord gave a, a, a word to his people when he led them out of Egypt. He told that this which, which holds true today is for you today. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, he says this, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned nor should the flame scorch you. I will just take that for it. Let's just pause because sometimes we rush through the scripture and we miss the whole point. What was, what is the meaning? What's behind this? What does God want to convey to us? Because there is a true living God. Let me tell you, learn to pray. Really there's power in prayer. Prayer changes everything. Jesus' life was characterized by prayer. He was the son of God. He was God incarnate, but yet he still, we just celebrated his birth, but he still was a man of prayer. When he was on the mountain, he prayed. When he was in the valley, he prayed. He prayed to his father. When he foresaw that everything would come against him, he prayed to his father. He, when he, before he was baptized, he prayed. And when he prayed, heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove and rested light upon him and he was empowered for his mission. He prayed because prayer opens heaven. When he went onto the mountain of transfiguration, he prayed and his countenance changed. If you want to change, prayer will help you change. He said, this is how you pray. Our father who art in heaven. When you pray, things happen things change when he was about to be crucified he went to the garden of Gethsemane and he knelt down and he prayed he said if it's possible take this cup away from him. but if not thy not my will thy will be done he prayed and an angel appeared he didn't take the adversity but he strengthened him to navigate him through that to come out greater than he was before he entered the adversity so prayer empowers us prayer changes everything about our whole outlook in life. Prayer empowers us and lifts us up. Hallelujah, praise God. So he said, so what's happening in this statement in Isaiah? Isaiah, the, the scripture that Jesus quoted from was from Isaiah chapter 61. Just put the first verse. This is, Jesus is quoting this 
verse and applying it to himself. He says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken. And he quotes this scripture and he says, this has been fulfilled in your hearing today. I am the one that's going to bring this truth, this, this reality about. It's fulfilled in your hearing. Hallelujah. And so we read that we've got to go, we, got to, we have to take Isaiah's word seriously. If Jesus felt it's so important that he quotes and he applies his scripture to himself, because everything in Isaiah points to Jesus. Hallelujah. And so Isaiah tells us that when you pass through the woods, observe, look what, how it's phrased. When you pass through the oh, what the implication is this. You, God's not going to avoid bypass the water sometimes he'll let you go through the challenge in fact sometimes those who get it will get it today perhaps you won't get it at home you get it here today he he says when you pass perhaps the reason you're passing through the water perhaps the reason you are passing through the fire that will not scorch you nor should the flame scorch you that as a size says it's because why because you're following him Hallelujah. And because you're following him, you're following where the landscape, he's taking you, not where you want to go. But he's saying, in that, I will not leave you, nor forsake. Because you're for, I will be your shield. I will be your buckler. I will be your fortress. I'll be your protector. Hallelujah. So when we follow him, he leads us in the path that he wants to take us because he wants to bring something greater about in and through our lives. All you need to go, go over to the book of Daniel. And meet Shabak and Abednego, the three Jewish Hebrew boys taken into captivity with Daniel at the time. Which they, they changed their names. The chief of the eunuch changed their names because he wanted to change their identity. But they didn't forget, they forget their God. The world wants to change your, how you are, your outlook in the world. The world wants to condition you to forget your identity in God. The world wants to change, have you forget God. But they had him in centralized in their lives. And when it was, there was a call by King Nebuchadnezzar to worship the golden statue, they, they withheld, they withdrew. They wouldn't worship the false idol. And he said, if you don't worship it, the punishment is death. They said, we'd rather die and step over and see our king of glory than worship this false idol. And so he prepared the furnace for them. And he asked the attendants to heat it seven times hotter than it normally would be. And they took the three Jewish boys, they bound them hand and foot, and they threw them into the fiery furnace. He says, if you pass through the fire, the flames will not scorch you. The flame shall not scorch you. And true to God's word, hallelujah, praise God. The flames did not scorch them. In fact, the flames consumed the people outside the furnace and they were safeguarded within the furnace. The adverse God will safeguard you in adversity and will challenge those. The the opponents, God will challenge them and bring them down, but he will elevate you and take you out. Praise God. And when Nebuchadnezzar was looking from a spectator, looking from without and seeing what was taking place, he saw a fourth man in the fire. And he said, this looks like the son of God. So in your adversity, that's the opportunity where God will make his appearance. That's the cue for God to step into your situation. At the height of adversity, that's when it allows God to step into your situation, to acknowledge his presence. Hallelujah. Because the flames will not scorch you out of adversity. The rivers will not overflow you because God is with you to protect you and safeguard you. The same rivers, the same waters that drowned all those people safeguarded Noah and his family. Hallelujah, praise God. Ah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So this is true, God, true to his word. He says, he will heal the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. God made declaration, he told his people in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. I just want to read the final verse, the final uh, sentence in this verse. It says this, he will not leave you nor forsake you. If you have a paper, put that down. He will not leave me nor forsake me. Make a note of that. Make a mental note. Go make the reference and write it down. Hallelujah. Memorialize that statement because that will stand 
beyond the time itself. He will never leave you nor forsake. The question is, are you with him? The fact that we're here today, we're with him, praise God. And God delights in that. And people watching live stream, God bless you. God is with you. Praise the Lord. Let me just go to another verse very quickly. Verse 8, 31 verse 8, very quickly. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. Goes before you. He's leading you into the waters. He's leading you into the rivers. He's leading you through the fires. But he's with you. He'll make you fireproof. He'll make you waterproof. Huh? Hallelujah. He'll make you Satan proof. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says, he says, he'll go before you. He will be with you. He, 20, 2023, God is, God is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you. He will not leave you. Nor for, don't, whatever happens in your 2023, let me assure you that God will never leave you and, it, and he will not forsake you. For he will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Perfect love casts out fear. Hallelujah, praise God. And then he says to Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. No man should be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. There is no adversity that can stand before you all the days of your life. As you journey this, the journey you're going through. This adventure of life. He says there's no man should be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake. This is, this is God saying it to Joshua. He's saying it to you today. As he was with Moses, so he, he'll be with Joshua. As he was with Joshua, so shall he be with you today. Hallelujah. Claim that. Embrace that. Receive that. Accept that. And walk in accordance to what God is saying. Praise the Lord. And he's made this statement to Joshua. Watch this. Watch this. It didn't mean that Joshua did not have battles that he had to fight. I wish I'm speaking to someone. He said, I'll be with you and I will not leave you nor forsake you. Uh, he says, do not fear, he says to him, I will not forsake you. But it didn't mean that he would not have battles. The, the difference is God will be in those battles with him. In fact, the battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God, amen. God is fighting the battle for you and me. All we need to be still and see the salvation of God. God revealed to Moses and to, to Israel, he said, the Egyptians you see now, you shall never see, you shall not see forevermore. So what you had in 2022, you shall not see again. God is rebuilding you. Sometimes before, before we become established in God, we have to be broken down before God can start to build us up. I wish I'm speaking to you. Perhaps you've been broken in 2020. This year is your building year. It's your reconstruction year. It's the divine intervention. Hallelujah. God is about to rebuild you, remake you better, a better version than you have ever been. Hallelujah. God is in the process now of rebuilding Hallelujah. So the storms and adversity, they've never been intended to hurt, destroy you. They've been intended to reveal what's in you. Come on, I, I really yes. pray that you receive this. You know, next week we have John Conte, you know, the former world champion, your eminence. John Conte won the world title, WBC uh, 1977. I was, a, I was young then. You, you won't believe it. I, I was actually born in that. <laughs> and uh, he won. It was one of my favorite boxers. It was probably one of the best boxers that this country's ever produced. And he's coming here to give his life story with us next Sunday morning. The WBC world champion. And he was talking about his experiences in life. And he was sharing that, how adversity would happen and how that shaped him and brought him to where he is today. I'll leave him to share his story. But I'm saying to you, so... We are on a journey. So whatever we've been through is never intended to destroy you. It is, sometimes what we go through is intended to get, for God to get our attention. That's how much he loves us. He makes it his business to put us through situations to get our attention that we can hear his voice. Sometimes we would never hear his voice. Had it not been for adversity, we would never hear God's voice. He will never get our attention because we're too caught up with the trappings of the world. Take courage because today God is rebuilding you. 
God is transforming with an added addition, with one thing different, extra in your life. The difference is with the rebuilding. He is in very much the midst of that construction. Wow. There's a, there's a, a Japanese art called kintsugi. Okay. And it's called golden joinery. You see, we Greeks, if you know about Greeks, you ever been to a Greek taverna, to a Greek club? They love to break plates. Do you know that? I don't know if you know you. I mean, it's Greek, so there's a tradition. You go to, uh, they play bouzouki in the in Greek, the instrument, um, Middle Eastern instrument, and they start smashing plates. And that's what the world does to us. It wants to smash us up, break us all the time. But God wants to take that brokenness and rebuild it. But, make, but when he rebuilds it, he puts more value before it was broken. I wish. And I've got a video to show you what this process is. This, this is called kintsugi, which means golden repair. In fact, they use either silver, gold, or platinum to repair. Watch this. Let me just quickly show the video. Really, I want to carry on with this because I want to tell you, God is in the business of rebuilding you better version than you have ever been. Hallelujah. Put, can we put it on our overhead, please? Now, this is what the world does. Watch back. It wants to break you, discard you. Okay? But this is where the master potter comes into, into the equation, into effect. Starts getting golden dust, prepares it, and starts rejoining, starts repairing you. Thank you. Now, the plate had a price before it was broken. A monetary price before it was broken. When the potter took it and re-put it together with the gold, it increased in value. It wasn't the clay that was the value, it was the gold. I want to show you some vases, uh, some pots. Uh, bowls that have gone through the pool. Look at this. This is beautiful art. This is artwork, Japanese artwork. You see, that was broken and they put it together. They don't discard the brokenness. They seal value to show the imperfection of humanity and they bring it back together. And the bowl takes a greater worth than it was in the beginning. And today, let me declare, proclaim to everyone here at the end of the sound of my voice, you are of more value than you were when you started your journey. You are more value than what you were when you were broken. You are more value now. You can leave here knowing that you are priceless before God. Hallelujah. I wish I was speaking to someone today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 18 says this. I've seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comforts to him and to his mourners. Praise God. God, blessed are those who mourn. They shall be comforted. God is going to bring healing Something that you're going to have a joy that surpasses understanding. You're going to have a peace that goes beyond your expectation in your heart. When you let that golden divinity flow through you and mend you and bring you and hold you together, things become transformed. You know, I read in the Message Bible because I look at different translations. And I like the Message Bible because it's more like street language. And I want to just read the Message Bible and I want to read the... The, 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 the authorized translation. This is in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, and I want to read from verse 8 to verse 11. This is in the, in the, uh, in the message translation, message Bible translation. I really like that translation, even though it's not theologically, but it's, I like the way it brings, it brings, highlights what's a language that we can connect to and understand in the way it, it speaks street jargon, if you like. This is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We don't have the, the, the message on our overhead, but I'll, I'll read it from, from the actual message uh, uh, that I've taken. 
Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Wow. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged in, into these hard times. Feeling you're going hard times? You're not the only ones. We all go through hard times. <laughs> you know, hard times. You're not the only ones. Uh, hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The sufferings won't last forever. The sufferings won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. He gets the last word. God is the first and he's the last. The beginning and the end. He who was and is and is to come. He has the last word. Hallelujah. So don't worry what people say. You know, people like to have arguments and say things. And always wants one, one upmanship. I want the last word. I want to win the argument. We want nothing. The grave is going to win the last argument. <laughs> so don't try and outdo. Just trust God. He will always have the last word. This is, this is the original. This is the trans that the author says this. Let me read from verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says this. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Be vigilant, be watchful. Verse 9. Verse 9. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Look how the Message Bible nice puts in nice uh, street jargon. In the world, verse 10. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, what? Suffer a while? Perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, the, the, word, the word is, um, this word, gadatisi, uh, to prepare means to mend you. He mends you. He repairs you. And God is in the business of repair. Constructing you better than you ever were before, praise God. You want house modification, he's the greatest architect, greatest designer. You want to change your life, you want to put extensions in your life, let him do the work. Let him change everything. And he's in the business today of doing new things in and through your life, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Our brokenness is held together by his divinity. It's your brokenness, God brings us together and he holds us together. Through his presence. It's his presence that keeps us gelled together. And when he enters our life, the same way those, those plates and those bowls, they look different. They have a, you can see something different in them, about them. They look different to what they were at the beginning. When God starts working and bringing you together, you're going to be looking different to the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to read. I, know, I don't want to over speak over time but i wouldn't just read a few more verses just to get put the context to his 2 corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 this is paul talking about his experience okay challenged but not destroyed he says this we are hard pressed on every side maybe you have challenges today you don't know how to deal with them let me tell you take courage god is in that situation and he's going to show you a way he's going to help you move forward uh, it says, oppressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our bodies. So that gold you're seeing in these plates and in these bowls and these vases is, 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 is if you look at it from a biblical perspective, is Christ's presence in our lives. He says, he says that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our so it's manifest in our lives. His presence is visible for others to see by the way we speak, by the way we behave, by the way we live. They see evidence that God, God is in our lives and changes us. Because when people want us to be depressed, woe is me, we're saying praise the Lord, glory, hallelujah. 
They can't get it because they try to destroy you, but every time they throw you down, you bounce back up. The law, Isaac's law of, of, of gravity is that what goes up must come down, but the law of God is what goes down must come up. The righteous fall seven times, but they rise again, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise. You'll just bounce back up. The anointing lifts you up. Oil will always rise above the water. Oil will always surface. You try and shake it, bring it down, it's going to rise again. You're always going to rise. When you trust in God, in spite of everything, you will always prevail. You will always overcome. Praise the Lord. Let's just give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it holds true the word of Jesus, what he said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he says this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, praise God. He is the good physician to get to parts that other religion philosophies cannot get to. Science cannot explain it, praise God. But God can change the inner man. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. And we're going to trust on him today. I pray I, I, I ask you just trust in him, praise the Lord, hallelujah, because he sent his word, Jesus Christ, and he heals. The, the, the psalmist tells us, Psalm 107 verse 20, says this, he sent his word and healed them. And all I'm giving you today, I'm, all I'm doing is sending you a word. It's not my word, I'm just a caretaker of the word, I'm sending you the word the logos in the beginning was the word i'm sending you the word that brings healing brings transformation praise the lord brings sight to the blind hearing to the deaf uh, uh, puts a voice in in our mouth hallelujah i'm speaking about the, uh, i'm sending you that word that's going to bring healing and it has brought healing is and will bring healing god is bringing changing things today and as i said at the beginning as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, praise the Lord. He sent his word and brought healing. God is repairing you. God is transforming you. What you are, what you were, you're going to be completely transformed by the power of his word. Hallelujah. He sent his word and he brought healing. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Last week you were anointed. Whoever came here, if you were not anointed, at the end of this message, I'm more than happy to anoint anyone who, who was not here last week. And anointing brings power, breaks the yoke. Hallelujah, praise God. And God now is repairing us. The gold of divinity is bringing us together. God is holding us together. God is upkeeping us. God is protecting us. God is covering us. Praise the Lord. So we want to give him glory, praise on this day. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what the battles you're going through, but I know someone who can change everything for you. Hallelujah. I know the one who was in the fiery furnace in Babylon. That's the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the true living God. Praise God. I know the one who spoke and said that whatever you go through, I will be with you. Not your, the fire will not score you the fire the fire will empower you and refine you but not destroy you that's the one I'm speaking about I'm presenting to you today so if the message is spoken to you and you want to feel that presence of God to renew you I'm going to ask you to come forward for prayer I'm going to ask his eminence to join me on the stage praise God hallelujah so if you want to come for prayer hallelujah and you want to be transformed you don't want to live in your brokenness, but you want God to bring you together, to make that difference, to put value in your life, put the gold of his divinity, hallelujah, to flow through you, to keep you together. This is the day, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can leave here really transformed, embracing that.